Hey, Wes, good to be back with you for another Acorn Short. How are you doing? Yeah, the day fine. It's it's nice just to be awake with the sun shining, isn't it? So, absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, so today we're going to look at the role of community in the healing okay. ministry. So the reason that we've brought this out today is because you have mentioned um, the Christian Christian healing ministry um, is something we do, isn't it? It's something that we are. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it's it's really funny. I mean, the, the, the phrase that we we've sort of gathered in in Acorn is that the, the Christian ministry is something that we are, mm. rather than just simply something that we do. Mm. And and the reason being, it's not something that's tacked on to the rest of our lives. So, for instance, you know, you you look at your diary on a Saturday night and think, oh crumbs, I'm on the prayer ministry team in the morning. You know, I, <laughs> I better take a few moments to pray and get my life right because I might have to do something. <laughs> it's it's much more. That's the disposition of our lives. It's the way that that the Acorn prayer ministers are all the time. They're always available to be able to pray for somebody wherever they are. Rather than just saying, OK, here's a meeting in which I do this. It's actually saying this is the way that my life works. This is who I am. But the other factor that comes into that is that rather than adding it on to life and letting it, in a sense, try and find some space within us. You know, have I, have I got five minutes to look at the prayer ministry um, mm. thing or to look at healing? Actually, it's it's become very much more a central part of our discipleship and our walk with God. So that in, you know, in, in a very real sense, um, we're prepared all the time for the moment when God might say, would you pray with this person? So, so in a sense, it's like saying to God, I'm available all the time. Yeah. And, and so rather than saying, okay, I try and fit this in between this event and that activity and doing this and doing that and doing that, mm -hmm. it's become much more, the core of who we are and that everything else has to sort of take its place in that context so that's how I came to the idea that it, it's it's something that we are much more than something that we just simply do and provide and I think the interesting thing of course and I have to wonder what the disciples would have thought when they were sent out by Jesus which we might talk about in a minute you know mm -hmm. I'm thinking right okay so how does this work well, yeah. as we've journeyed, we've realised we needed to give it space in our lives and let the Holy Spirit constantly be there in that way. Absolutely. Just as you're talking about it, um, I love this saying, like, basically, always, always be ready. It is kind mm. of something I've just received out of that. But um, it really does change our life, our discipleship, doesn't it? When we envision this and, and live this out as something we are rather than something we do. Yeah, it does. So it's, so it's like, for instance, you walk into any room or, you know, public, private, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and the natural inclination of your heart is to say, Lord, um, why am I here? Because, yeah. you know, not not just, you know, not as an ex existential question. Why am I alive? But say, <laughs> Lord, in, in this moment here, is there anything that you want to do? Is there anyone that I need you want me to talk to is there anyone that you would want me to pray for do you know and it's not about being weird it's just about remaining constantly open to yeah. the possibility that god would intervene in his healing grace somewhere somehow for someone yeah which is absolutely amazing um and we've also sort of transferred this or started to encourage within the acorn community haven't we um that this truth that it is something that we are um being part of a healing hub or the Acorn Christian Healing Academy. Can you mm. just explain that a little bit further for people who may not know what it is? Yeah, it is. It's really interesting. As you read um, through uh, the scriptures, you know, little things really sort of interest you. you know, like, like, for instance, I know this is crazy, but like when the animals came to Noah in the ark, and I don't know how it happened because I wasn't there, okay, <laughs> but they came in twos, okay, what does Jesus do? He sends the disciples out in twos. Now, I, I know the logic of the Noah story, male and female, I, I, I've got a hold of that, but actually it, there's something about the community element of the healing ministry that's really, really important. And um, mm. throughout sort of a season of church history, the idea was that, you know, or some people got the hold of the idea that there was 
a one person who, you know, wore a particular type of suit and they were the person who had the power and they they prayed uh, for people. And that's how people got healed. Of course, when John Wimber came, he understood much more that it was about the church as a community of healing and of grace and so one and, and of course then the jesus sends the disciples out to do this all of the disciples to do this so the thing that interested me was that and and we've seen that in our healing hubs and in the healing academy that that christian healing and it should be so in church is about a community thing yeah. It's about a thing that we do together. There's no superstar in this. There's only one healer, and that's Jesus. We're all just his sort of assistants, if you like. Yeah, yeah. But we do it together. And, and so I can imagine you know, when the disciples were um, were praying, you know, and oh, I don't know who, who Jesus sent out with whom, you know. But I mean, if you imagine Peter and John were out and they come to somebody and pray and John says to Peter, OK, do you want to go? Do you want to do this? And and Peter says, yeah, OK, I'll do this. And maybe next time Peter says, well, John, hey, why don't you do this? And they're doing it together. And so that while one person's praying, somebody else is supporting them and, and yeah. reaching out to God for it. And of course, you can only do that in the sense of being in community. And, and, and the other interesting thing about this is that the healing community, certainly in Acorn, has become a place where we support one another, not just when we're together, yeah. but we are supporting one another in prayer. We're learning together. We're discussing, we're debating, we're sharing our joys, we're sharing our sorrows and our disappointments as well, but we're growing together. And it just seems that, you know, I can grow on my own, but actually I grow much faster if I'm with other people. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. It, it, I, it's been a really wonderful environment to be a part of. Um, mm. the, just acorn in general but particularly the christian healing academy it's been really really great um but for people who maybe aren't yet part of a, a healing hub or the academy they're just watching today um mm. how how might they be able to um express this community be a part of the uh the faith community um well for instance the academy is open to anybody um, mm. it's it's um, on a Saturday morning once a month it's three hours of learning and experience and practice and growing and discussion and conversation about some of the issues relating to the Christian healing ministry literally from the very beginning to then mm. some of the bigger issues that we have to face like for instance the issues of chronic and, and long-term and even terminal illness mm. how does the church respond in those sort of moments and so the, the, the academy is a, is a growing opportunity to do that, where in a sense, we practice getting better at what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> but the healing hubs, I mean, literally, so we started them out. And I just said, say to people, find five friends who are of like mind to you. And let's have a conversation about how you could become an Acorn Healing Hub or how you could become a, a place of healing prayer in the name of Jesus for other people. And, and in a sense, we've worked out that not every church is necessarily focused on it or equipped for it or able to do it. So that's why we've been gathering um, across a number of churches and denominations in a, a local area, just people who have this passion and interest to say, can we have a conversation with you about how you might become a place where people go, do you know, if I need prayer, I know where I can go to. Yeah. That's good. And it doesn't have to be on a Sunday morning. It could be, you know, when I'm in need. And yeah. so we started those sort of hubs and, you know, anybody could start one in yeah. the church. They could start one, you know, yeah. we're very happy to help and serve them and, and, and help them through with that. But it's the community thing. When I add my faith to your faith, when I join in faith with other people and expectation with other people, it seems that we see more being done than just if it's just me on my own. Mm -hmm. That's great. That is really thought provoking. Um, and if you are watching this, listening to this today and you're thinking, oh, I need that community, um, feel free to join us for the academy or, or just connect mm -hmm. with us here at Acorn um, or whatever is going on in your local church as well. There'll be some good stuff going on. But um, we'll end it here for now, Wes. Thank you. And uh, we'll catch you guys at the next Acorn Short. Bye bye.